So we're going to be talking about the, the rocks here. This is Blacktail Canyon. We're just uh, past uh, mile 120 and a half. And uh, it's a slot canyon. It, it, uh, it walls up up here and we'll, later on we'll go right to the very end and uh, Nate will give us instructions on that. But here we are. We promised you that we'd bring you to the Great Unconformity. And here it is. Above us, we've got the Tapit Sandstone, okay? And it, it's been officially dated at 508 million years old. And uh, you can see at the very bottom of the Tapit Sandstone, you can see pebbles that have been plucked up from, uh, say, some of these quartz veins here. This is, this is the Vishnu Schist below here. This is the Great Unconformity, this boundary here, okay? Right along here, it's the Great Unconformity. And so this is the first debris that makes up the Tapit Sandstone. Underneath is the Vishnu Schist. You can see it's, uh, it's got a layering like this. It's a metamorphic layering. Some of the layering goes the other way. This way, you've got these quartz veins. Okay, and you can see this, this material has been plucked up and caught up in there. This has been dated at conventionally at uh, 1.74 billion years. So there's approximately 1.2 billion years of missing time and materials at that boundary. This Vishnu schist is creational. Not necessarily in the condition in which it was created because it would have suffered from up the upheavals at the beginning of the flood. Conventionally, this would have been regarded as something like a siltstone or a clay siltstone, muddy siltstone or a mudstone uh, that would con convert it into what is essentially a quartz mica schist. Uh, the metamorphic rocks are named according to their mineral constituents. Later on, after we move up the canyon, have our devotional and then go up to the end, have a look as you go up at variations in the schist because further up in the canyon you'll see uh, red brown, deep red brown spots in the rock about the size of a quarter. Those are garnets, almondine garnets. And uh, that is typical of a mudstone or shale that's metamorphosed into a metamorphic rock. So up there, it would be called a quartz mica, a, a quartz mica garnet schist, okay, because of the mineral constituents in it. So uh, this is an incredible place that we bring people to because it gives you the opportunity, as we promised you, uh, and you'll be able to photograph, take photographs here. Uh, you can have one hand on flood rock, one hand on creation rock, and. Uh, what I've found, of course, is that uh, people can talk about the Grand Canyon, okay, but it's not the same until you've been there. And as soon as you're in the photograph in the Grand Canyon, people suddenly realize, ah, oh, you've been there, you know what you're talking about. And so that's why at Answers in Genesis, we've tried to bring all of our speakers down here so they get photographed in the canyon, so if they talk about the Grand Canyon, people recognize that they've been there, they're not just talking off the top of their heads. And so this is an opportunity for you to get a memorable photo shot, a, a photo of you down here <coughs> at the Great Unconformity. Uh, and, uh, and, and use it as a, as a point uh, to talk to people. Remember that uh, a, lot of, a lot of people who come through here, the canyon don't even stop here. And uh, the people who come into the canyon on river trips are a, a minority of a minority of a minority. So this is a, <coughs> this is a special place to come to. <coughs> and I want you to think about <coughs> what this surface represents, the Great Unconformity. And we've alluded to this already. <coughs> when uh, we read the flood account, now, God says that he's going to destroy the earth with man. Why? Because every thought 
of man's heart was only evil continually. God repented that he'd made man. Uh, such was his anger that not only did he wipe man out, but he wiped the, the animals out. <clears throat> the inference is that the earth had become full of violence. It may well have been not only man, but animals had become very violent. And when you, when you consider, you know, people's uh, imaginations run riot with uh, some of the dinosaurs ripping other animals apart, you get an idea of the picture of the violence that might have been in the pre-flood world. And so this surface at the great unconformity represents God's wrath or wrath, his anger at sin that he had to go to the extent of totally wiping clean, wiping it clean, the earth's surface, destroying everything on it and reshaping these rocks above us are a consequence of that judgment and they're also a record of that judgment. The very fact that you've got the fossils in these layers above my head are a reminder that God said he was going to, he, he, would, he wiped all flesh out. Everything that had the breath of life perished and there they are above us in those layers. God keeps his word he judges, he hates sin, and he judges. And so we need to take it very seriously. And this is why this is a very, um, uh, pl a place to be you know, thoughtful and contemplative about what, what it all means. And so we encourage you to you know, just be quiet as we, uh, as we think about these issues here at this spot. So, uh, so this is the Vishnu Schist, which is the foundation rocks of the continent, the creation weak rocks, not necessarily in the form in which God created them, because they may have been affected by the heat and pressure of the upheaval at the time of the beginning of the flood and subsequently. But we do see the massive erosion surface here. As I said, this, this surface here, the great unconformity, is now recognized as a global erosion surface. And we're just seeing one portion of it. But you've already seen it for mile after mile above our heads. You know, just in the last few miles as we went into camp, we, we could see the, the Tapit sandstone and right under the Tapit sandstone, this great unconformity. And we were fortunate that this has come down to river level. Uh, uh, just very shortly as we as we pull out of here and go downstream, the great unconformity goes underwater. You won't see it again for a few miles, but you will see it again today, and uh, you will climb up through it again today. Where we put in the Deer Creek Falls, we'll be down in granite, and when we hike up to, to, to the top of the waterfall, we'll be going up across the great unconformity up into the Tapete Sandstone. So it's a, it's a testimony to the catastrophe of the flood. There's no, no question about it. And as I said, the secular geologists recognize this as a global erosion surface. Some are even recognizing that, that this sequence of sandstone, shale and, and limestone that we see here is also globally distributed. But you see, they don't see the connection to the Bible because they're not starting with the Bible. They're not looking at the, at the observations, the data. This is the data. The rock is the data. The flood is the interpretation. Millions of years is an interpretation. But we have an eyewitness who is there who has told us. Now, some people say, oh, you know, the flood account reads like a ship's log. No, no, it doesn't, because Noah was inside the ark. He didn't see the fountains of the great deep break open. God had shut the door. It's God's account given to Moses of what was happening. Most of the details Noah didn't see or know about, but God observed and recorded so that we would have the lens to interpret the evidence that we see here in the Grand Canyon as a testimony to the, his 
his judgment during the flood.